Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at a cool use of the side chain in the sampler instrument. I'm always looking for ways to get things to work together in interesting new ways, and I thought about this and I was like, you know, I bet you we could do something with the side chain here. And so what I have is this instrument loaded up. It sounds like this. It's, you know, interesting. A little bit of out of tune type sound, but I added a side chain on bus 10, so I had to create bus 10 first. What the side chain is coming off of is this drum track. So I just created a, a basic drummer. I ramped up all uh, the complexity and loudness. Probably could do something with the fills if we wanted to. But I set the output of this track to bus 10 and made sure there was no sends. And then once I created the bus 10, I had to turn it off from the auxiliary track that was automatically created because I didn't want it to actually go anywhere except bus 10 with no destination yet. After I did that, then I could come into the sampler and choose bus 10 as an option. Uh, you actually have to make sure there's a created source for the bus before it'll show up in that menu. After that, you can come down in, into your mod matrix and choose sidechain as one of the sources. Now in this case, what I want to do is do a little bit of bit crushing a little bit. And we're going to make this go down to one bit. And oh, we do need to make sure that this is inverted. So that way, the softer the side chain is, the more it's going to take it down to one bit. So now, it's going to sound like this when I play a note, because the side chain, there's no actually playing of that instrument right now. The minute I play it and there's signal, it's going to pull the, the bit depth back up to more acceptable le uh, levels. If I want to even have it do a little bit more, we can come through and turn the fader down on the drummer even more. But we should find a sweet spot where we can still kind of uh, hear both the musicality and the, the end result effect. We could change how much is happening with the drummer to do a more complex or a simple pattern. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could come down and be like, you know, let's do a loud but simple pattern. And we'll do it half time. So now when I push play, a much simpler pattern. I don't, I don't think I actually like that in this case as much. So let's go back to the more complex and we'll just do a normal pattern there. But we could, for instance, take off some of the elements if we wanted just uh, something still complex but uh, without all of the harmonic content. <laughs> You can come up with some really interesting sounds here, things that uh, all by itself, it would never get to that point. Now we could do this a couple different ways. Uh, we could, instead of doing it internally here, we could also put on an audio effect 
And with this one, what we would do is use the bit crusher itself. And we could come through with a MIDI effect, either use uh, any combination of these, but the modulator might work decently. Um, and what we would do for this is something very similar. We would say learn plugin parameter on the resolution. We could even do a random pattern or one that fits into a tempo. And maybe lower the over output level while setting an offset so it stays a little bit more musical. other way with the output level. There we go. Lots of really cool sounds you can do with this. So, a uh, little bit different with the two methods. Um, right now I prefer the one that's inside the sampler itself and that is because uh, it actually comes with the preset a little bit easier. So uh, for instance I could save this as a new sampler instrument and that uh, actual mod matrix option would come with it. We would just have to do a side chain each time. But I think it's really valuable. Uh, and it's a, a cool way to be able to create some interesting sounds. Okay, so that's it for this uh, this look at doing some stuff with bit crushing inside the sampler, or in this case, using some of the other options. Keep in mind that there's a lot more to explore here. So we looked at the sidechain doing the target of bit resolution, but look at all these other things we can experiment with in terms of destinations for that particular source. And not just sidechain, but look at all the other things we could use to control the targets. We haven't even gotten into the VIA option, which we could do a whole bunch more with, and you can come up with some really complex sounds mangling up your samples so that one instrument could fill the role of many different soundscapes or sound parts of your songs. So get creative here and really explore what's, uh, what's available and what you can do with this. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this brief look at this. And um, we'll be doing more videos soon.